Hey guys, True Grit Scott, Bulletproof Saws at BlueSaws.com. Yeah, I'm in a weird spot today. I'm over at one of the shipping counters and my kids got a couple 350X motors, if you know, you know, on the other benches. So I'm over here messing with this and all I'm doing is it's a stock 372, needs a three quarter wrap handle put on it. But it also needed a wall broke carb put on it. And, you know, customers want the carb. Hey, could you guys put it on? No big deal. I'm not even going to charge you to do it. And as I'm doing it, there was a couple things I thought maybe I'd tell you guys. You know, and we talk about how much, in general, I really like HLIC carbs. Except on the 372 and the G366. I don't like those HLICs. Maybe they're not the worst carbs in the world, but I dislike them enough to use them as rocks to throw at raccoons knocking over a trash can. So I got the Walbro here. I got the HLIC here. And, and what I'm going to tell you is, and I've said this before, the HLIC is in the 44s, 46s, 66s, 395s. They come in the 880s. Maybe they come in the 880s too. I got to think about that because they may or may not. I love the carbs. I think that they're dynamite. Uh, 372 is the garbage. And it's funny, as I get to looking at the Walbro versus the HLIC, I honestly think that the HLIC is a, a nicer looking carb. It looks like it's, it's better made, and I'm going to tell you why. You got your fuel and your impulse lines on them. On the HLIC, it's actually barbed. Not a big deal instead of just a, a straight flat tube. I think that's a little bit nicer when you have the barbs on them. The fit and finish, I mean, it's it's pretty darn close. You'd almost think they were the same carb made in the same thing with just a different name on them. But if you get to really look and you do see the differences in the carbs. But I'm telling you, the HLIC carb appears to be a quality unit. A couple of things I'm going to tell you. The throttle cable holder, the little white plastic here is slightly different on the HLICs versus the Walbros. I've seen some of the Walbro carbs where, because there's a little more maybe meat on the plastic, and it, it probably varies depending on where they're getting these little plastic things from, that it might hold open the throttle cable just a little bit. So sometimes I'll take the one from the HLIC and use it on the Walbro. Generally don't have to do that, but once in a while, if you have a problem and you have an HLIC, you pop that guy off and be real careful when you pop it off because it's real easy to break the plastic nib on it. You got to squeeze it, get it out on the one side, then pop it out on the other. And once you break one, you'll figure out how to do it without breaking them. But just, I'm telling you, be careful when you do it the first time. The other thing I'm going to tell you, there's insulator tubes inside the carb that the, the carb bolts go through. How am I going to show you this? Uh, you probably, I think you guys could see me. I don't even know how the lighting is over here. So your insulator tubes go in your carb bolt holes. And let's see. And then your bolts go through to hold the carb on, right? Now, I'm going to get a ration of shit over this. A lot of guys say those insulator tubes don't matter. It's for heat dissipation. So the carb doesn't transmit heat through the bolts. Whatever the story is, I'm going to tell you I've done a whole bunch of these carbs on 372s. And I've done them without the insulators in them and they've worked. But once in a while you'll get a 372. And I don't know if it's because now they're not fitting as snug and there's a little wiggle room, a little play in them. But I've had air leaky issues. And the only change that I make, and listen, you're retightening them down. So maybe that's all it was, but it wasn't because I've tightened them, untightened them, played with it for a while. And those insulators, you know, it just holds it square the way it's supposed to be. It's designed for it. They put them in there for a reason. I'm not going to argue with the Husky engineers. We could argue about some other things, but we're not going to argue about this. And the only change that I made on those saws was that I put the insulators in and the problem went away. So... You might not think those little insulators are important, but they are, and I've seen them, black insulators, clear, looks like aquarium bubble line tubing as insulators, although I think that might be a little bit big, so I don't think it has to be any fancy tubing as long as it fits in there correctly and your bolts will go through them. As long as you have those tubes in there, it takes up some slop, and I know, you're all going to tell me I'm wrong, but I've seen it enough times that... 
I will never build one again without those insulator tubes unless I had to because I had to run that saw that day and I'm rolling the dice because I didn't have any other saw and you know that's never going to be true and I had to do it. So those are my old 372 things. As long as I have it open, I'll probably go through it. He didn't have the pre-flight, but it's hard for me not to look at it when I got it open. So I'll just go through it very quickly and won't get overly engaged in something I'm not supposed to do anyway. And I'll swap out the handle, run this saw, make sure everything's good, drain the oil, pack it up and get it out for the fella. But I figured I'd just take the two seconds and do the video. I had a dentist appointment this morning, been running around. It's kind of been an off day with getting everything done. So there's my quick video, guys. True Grit Scott, Bulletproof Saws and Blue Saws.com. Thanks for watching and stay safe.